Hello, welcome to Online Healing Crusade. We're so glad to have you again here. We believe the Lord has been blessing you if you've been joining us for some time. And if this is your first time, well, you're welcome. We believe the Lord has brought you and um, God is going to bless you so richly tonight in Jesus' name. The servant of the Lord, evangelist, the evangelist is ready. God has uh, given him another word for tonight. And uh, I want to just... Um, Employ you to uh, sit back and enjoy God for the next 30 minutes because something is going to happen. You know, something happens where the word of the Lord is being preached and where the word of the Lord is taken in than, than any other place in life. Something happens when you take in the word of God. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? The word of the Lord is coming your way again. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus that liberates. Men, the gospel of Jesus that heals, that delivers, is coming your way shortly. I believe you are prepared in the name of Jesus. Join me to welcome the servants of the Lord, evangelist Louis Ulufebi Ogulari, as he brings the word of the Lord unto us again from the throne of grace. God bless you and stay connected. Praise the Lord. We thank God for an opportunity to bring you the word of life. We thank God for what God has made doing on this platform. Uh, every time we come on board, we believe that God has something special that he wants to bring to you. And um, ministry and healing is our job and our assignment on this platform. And I pray that the Spirit of the Lord will reach out to you today in a wonderful way in the name of Jesus. Um, I'll be reading from John chapter 9 for the message today. John chapter 9 from verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which, has, which was blind from his birth. Underline that word. Was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither had this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me, while it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, is spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, Go watch in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, It's like him. But he said, I am he. Praise God. All right. Um, you see, there is something about the scriptures. The Bible says the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. Every healing that we can ever receive <clears throat> usually comes to us from the Word of God. The Word itself is the Lord Jesus Christ, according to John chapter 1, verse 1, said, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And it is this Word that dwelt among us and became flesh. And the Word is what became Jesus Christ and started ministering the Word of healing to people around. So Jesus left now physically, but he left us with the Word. So we can get the same healing we used to get from Jesus Christ, we can get it from the Word. And whatever Jesus did then, the Word can do now. The Word of God in the mouth of Jesus then is as powerful as the Word of God in our mouths today. It's been backed up by the same Holy Ghost power. And then there's something I wanted to get here. And that is the fact that um, this person was born with this problem. That means any defect that happens from birth can be healed through the name of Jesus, through the word of God, 
through the anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatsoever you are born with, may I tell you that you were not created with it. You were only born with it. You were not created with it. Because in creation, there is perfection. He didn't create anything with defect. No defection, no uh, um, incompleteness, no imperfection in his creation. He created everything beautifully, wonderfully, excellently. In fact, for him to be sure that what he has created is excellent, he cross-checked his one before he released them to the world. If you created an animal, you cross-check. Is this animal good enough? If it's excellent, then you can go. When you created a plant, you'll be sure, is this plant good enough? Then you can go. If you created heaven and earth, you will check. Are the firmaments okay? Is everything all right? And then you will find out it is good. Then, so it means he usually tests his product as a manufacturer. He tests his products before sending them out. I think the same thing, every other company do that. Even if you are a furniture maker, you test your furniture to be sure that it's a good material. So it won't spoil your name. If you are producing um, um, uh, maybe a, a vehicle, you will test the vehicle and be sure it's okay. In fact, you give guarantee that this product that I have released out, which I manufacture, I can guarantee you for five years it won't give you trouble. Some other people could have electrical appliances and they will say, I guarantee you this product will work for you for the next three years without any problem. Another one, they will say, this one will last you for one year, 12 months. I can guarantee you nothing wrong will happen to this thing that I've just finished creating because they test run it. If you see the way they test run some vehicles, you will say, wow, are they not trying to destroy it? No. They want to be sure that if a man is inside this thing and then he ramps into a wall, is the person inside safe? So they will, after they finish the vehicle, they will run it into a wall, rah, feel the impact. Then whosoever is inside, how will the person feel when he jack? Is that something that can hold them back and all that? They are using that to trust run the ability of the vehicle they have created. Those human beings that did that, they can't be more intelligent than God. So if God created man, he will not allow any defect. And if you find any product that um, they say five years it will be okay, and the second year you find that it's not okay, they ask you to bring it back. They either repair it for you or even take it and give you another new one. Because they don't want you to have an, an impression that uh, that company, their product is not always good. So God is the manufacturer of our body. And when he created us, he did not allow any defect to be there. So anywhere you see a defect in any human being, it is not from God. I repeat, any defect in any human being is not from God. I repeat third time, any defect in any human being is not from God. Whether defect in his body or defect in his organ or defect in his mind or defect in his brain, whatever, it is not of God. The enemy must have done that. Praise God. Are you get what I'm saying? We have that kind of parable in the Bible. The Bible talks of a parable that is in John chapter 6, I think. John chapter 6, that talks about... Um, <clears throat> okay. Now, I was talking about the, the, the parable that talks about the parable of the sower. After the parable of the grass, then he moved to another parable of a seed that is sown. And after the seed has been sown, it was found out that it was sown on a good ground, and the seed was okay. But somehow, somehow, the enemy came and sowed tars. Yeah, I got it. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Just want to add it to what I'm sharing with you, because I want to note that God will never create anything that is defective. No, not at all. Uh, Matthew 13, let's start from verse... Um, <clears throat> let's start from verse 24. Matthew 13 from verse 24. Another parable put forth, put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sow good seed in his field. Every time the seed that God sows is always a good seed. The soil that he sows it unto is also a good soil. So there's nothing wrong with the seed, there's nothing wrong with the soil. Right? But why men slept, that's the beginning of the problem. Problems come when people are slumbering or they are weak spiritually, then the enemy can come in. But why men slept? The enemy came and sowed tars among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tars also. So the servant of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then had it tars? And he said unto, unto them, An enemy had done this. 
The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, No, nay, lest while you gather them up the tars, you will root up also the wheat with it, with them. So let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tars, and then bind them in bundles to burn them. Underline that word. You bind them to burn them. But then, you gather the wheat into the barn. You burn the wheat. You burn the tars. <laughs> you put the wheat in the barn. That's the storehouse. But you burn off the tars. That one is the one that has been disturbing since the time the thing has been growing. But you permitted it to grow to that point when you're going to separate the wheat from the tars. Are you getting what I'm saying? But then, what did I want to bring out? Why did I come to this place? I'm trying to tell you that if a person is born with a problem, God didn't create the problem. Maybe when men slept, the enemy came and put trouble in the midst of the good. But God will never do evil. He will always do good. Are you getting what I'm saying? All right, so this particular case that we are dealing with, uh, the Bible makes us to understand that um, it is... As we have read in the scripture, this place in John chapter 9, God is making us to understand that the man that was born blind, uh, was, it was not because of the mother or the father or because of the boy. It's because God wants to show his glory through the situation. Now, that, that, that gives us a clue now, because of what Jesus Christ did there that day, it gives us a clue that if there is any problem that a man is born with, that does not mean it's a permanent problem. We can pray in the name of Jesus and get that solution, get solution for the person. But if Jesus never did something like that, maybe we will assume that anything that happened to a person, since it's part of creation, maybe God just wanted the person to be like that. That's why he gave him one eye, or that's why he gave him one teeth, or that's why he made one ear to hear, another one not to hear, or one, make one hand to walk, another hand not to walk, make one leg to walk, another one not to walk. God never created anything like that. Can, can somebody create a vehicle and the vehicle have three legs and the, four, the fourth one is defective and he still wants to sell it for somebody to buy? Who will buy that from him? Are you guys what I'm saying? So can somebody create a, a, a bicycle with only one leg and the other one is defective and he put it on the counter and want to sell it? Who is going to buy that? Are you guys what I'm saying? So God, there's no way God could have created something that has a defect. Not at all. So any defect in any human being, I repeat it. It is not from God. If you see a man that is born and there is no eyes there, something stole the eyes. He has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But God didn't create a man without the eyes. Why would you do that? Are you getting what I'm saying? You see somebody uh, born, and after being born, the two legs cannot work. That's not from God. God can't create a person that doesn't have a leg. Much less that a, 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 a person manufacturing vehicle cannot create it without a tire. Are you getting what I'm saying? I mean, it, it looks absurd for God to do something like that. He can't do something like that. His creation is perfect. Go to the book of Genesis chapter 1. You see the creation of God there. You never see anything that is defective. When he created man and he found out that man of every other animal, all animals have male and female so they can reproduce. But man was not created with a woman. God said, no, this is not good. He was himself. Adam did not come to complain that I am not good, sir. Can you recreate me or can you give me a wife? It was God that knew that this my work requires some addition. This young man cannot be walking around here alone. He needs a wife. And then he created a wife for him. said, this is not good. Let me give him a wife. So anything that is not good, he will correct it by himself before releasing it to the earth. You understand what I'm saying? So this man that was born blind is just to show us some principles of how to deal with any situation that a man is born with that is not of God. We, we, we return the negative thing back to sender, and then we restore the man to his original state when God created him with everything perfect. Are you getting what I'm saying? So Jesus Christ got to this situation and looked at the man after answering the question from the, 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 the disciples. There is neither the man nor the parents, but that the glory of God may show forth. So I believe whatever is wrong with you today, it is that God wants to show his glory in this and through you and in you. And from the situation, God will get glory in the name of Jesus, okay? So, uh, what Jesus did there showed me some sample. And that is that there is no eyes, there is no eyes, eyeball inside the eye socket of the man. 
you know we have socket here then there's a ball rolling inside it there's a socket there there's a ball rolling inside it that small ball is your eyeball you understand me all right but if, for this case of this man other people that their eyes are blind it will be that the one that is inside that is supposed to be the ball have some defect that's why the person can't see that long or short or watery or something there's something wrong with the ball inside but in the case of this man no ball at all there's no ball here it's just a hole that goes inside a hole that goes inside without any ball inside so that's a situation that requires some extra work so jesus christ being part of trinity when god said let us make man in our own image and he made them in the image of himself male and female made them jesus was that part of that let us because god was not talking to angel then and he was not talking to man because man has not been created he was talking to men of his own level you know creatures of his own level or, or godhead of his own level say let us that is god the father god the son and god the holy spirit came together to know what they're going to do to be able to create man and when they created man they saw that it was perfect it has a nature of god it has that of jesus it has that of the holy ghost combined inside them those are the three professors that were there in the creation of man praise god are you getting what i'm saying but then um since he found out that no eyeballs there okay no problem i was there when god created all human beings um he used clay and he used his spittle so he spat on the ground and used it to make something like a small ball put it on one side and then another ball made of clay with the spittle and put it on the other side i asked myself why did he not say bring me water so i can use water to make the clay he was there when man was created if it was water that god used to mix clay that day he would have used water but because god didn't use water then god used his own spittle so he was part of creation if there is anything wrong with any part of your body and needs a recreation the creator is still alive he will recreate it for you in the name of jesus did you hear what i just said if there's any part of your body organs of your body that has been defective and not perfectly effective anymore and is giving you a problem I make bold to tell you today that the one that created the original organ in your body is still alive. So it can create another one. Are you guys what I'm saying? And replace the former one with a new one. You know, there was a, a case of a, a miracle that happened in the program. And um, uh, R.W. Shambach was there. And um, it was his friend a military officer that has had some problem or uh, maybe somebody in the mining who worked in the mining industry some things happened to the eyes and one of the eyes became totally blind cannot see with it but I attended a program with um, T.L. Osborne and T.L. Osborne called the man forward and prayed for the man and the eyes two brand new eyes were given to the man where there was no eyeball before two brand new eyes were given so that means the creator can see create two brand new eyes and give you if there's anything wrong, anything wrong with your eyes are you getting what i'm saying so i see this as another opportunity that any organ of your body is it your ears that is not working well god can create two new ones for you now is it your heart that the doctor says weak the creator of the heart is here today is able to create you a new heart not even repair the old one. It will just give you a new one. The eyes of that man was not repaired. His eyes was recreated because he met the creator. And Jesus Christ, the healer of that time, is still Jesus Christ, the healer now. He said, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he is here today. And if we call him again tomorrow, we'll still be here because he's the same. He has not changed. Are you getting what I'm saying? All right. So um, if God created two brand new eyes, he can create kidney two it can create liver a new one it can create heart a new one it can create lungs a new one it can create you know uh bladder a new one it can create any of the organs of your body it can give you a new womb are you guys i'm saying there is a testimony of a woman that got pregnant without having a womb 
and the doctor were surprised the day they want to make the delivery and find out that the baby was not inside the womb, was just somewhere in a new sack. God just created one sack for the baby. All the real, the real womb was not there. Maybe has done abortion or something has happened in the time past, but she kept on believing God. And God said, if you believe, I'll give you. And God gave a baby, and then where would the baby stay? The baby now stayed inside a newly created sack, not the womb. And the thing was enough to sustain the baby throughout the pregnancy, nine months, and then to deliver. You understand what I'm saying? And that is to tell you something that the creator is still alive, it's not dead. You understand me? Okay? The supernatural power and the ability of God is superior to whatever the devil is doing around. It's just that we need our faith in God to be in place. There's nothing the devil has done that God is not able to outdo and undo. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So the devil messed this man up, over 40 year old man, and he had lived 40 years of his life without any eyeball. But Jesus Christ came and said, I am the light of the world. That means I am opposite of what makes your eyes to be blind so that you will live in darkness. You will never see light of day. But since I am the light, then from today you start seeing light. Hey! And he minister light unto the person by releasing him to have eyes. So with the eyes, he will be able to communicate with the world with the ability to see light and darkness and whatever, and separate colors and all that. And he was able to do that. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I see that ability working out today. So if there's any organ of your body that is not functioning well, God will give you a new one. Uh, before I pray today, I remember the testimony that happened last year, 2021, uh, December. I was ministering. My father and the Lord called me to minister in a crusade, open air crusade in Ikiru. That's part of our southwestern part of Nigeria, my country. And then um, I was praying for people with eye problem. And then a woman came that is not with a eye problem. It brought a, a son, and the son was 12 years old, was born deaf. The son was born deaf. So he said he had come because of this son. The son is born deaf. Okay. So I place my hand, fingers on the ears. And then I pray in the name of Jesus, simple prayer. Then I move to the next person. But I felt something left my body. I said, Pastor, please help me check that boy. Check that boy. And I kept on praying for others. So at the time we finished, he brought the boy back. He said, you say I should check this boy, sir. We have checked. It's a 12-year-old boy that was born without ability to hear from day one. Born deaf. The one Jesus Christ handled here is born blind. This particular one was born deaf. Are you getting the same? And uh, from that moment, he was able to hear, he was able to speak, everything as if it was a lie. I called the mother to confirm. I said, is that your boy? Yes. You told me this? Yes. From when did this start happening? From birth. The two ears. Yes. Now he can hear with both sides. He can hear. That's the ability of God to undo whatever the devil has done, and to restore that boy to his original you know, purpose with God. Okay? Uh, are you get what I'm saying? Now, that will make us to understand that there's nothing the devil has destroyed that God is not able to create again. You understand what I'm saying? So ears is there to be able to make you to hear. Eyes is there to be able to make you to see. Your heart is there to pump blood onto all part of your body and give you, a, give you life, because blood is life. Your kidney is there to do its executive work. Your liver is there and your lung is there for breathing. So all these things are organs that God has given you. If anyone is growing beyond normal, uh, they say it's bloating up or it's now swelling or whatever, God will give you a new one today in the name of Jesus. Can I pray with you now? I want you to bow your head and then be referenced unto God because some spirit that carry those demonic things around your body will get out now in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I command every spirit of infirmity, spirit of um, infirmity, spirit supervisor that supervises sickness, especially sickness that stay in the body for many years, long-term sicknesses. I repeat you, devil. I say, take off your hand from them in the name of Jesus. Not only that, I ask you to leave that body physically, spiritually, leave the body of the people that you are assaulting now in the name of Jesus. And don't forget, as you are going, carry the symptoms of all the diseases, all the infirmities, all the pain, all the ache you are brought into their body, all the damage. Take them as you are going. You are the damaged one who is damaging people's life and organ. So you take your damage away with you in the name of Jesus. And I 
command you to leave and never try to come back again in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Not only that, I ask that any organ that has been affected negatively as the eye of this man was restored with new eyeballs, may your life receive newness of organ, newness of life in the name of Jesus. If it's your mind that has been affected by the devil, may you receive a new mind, fresh mind, with ability and capability to be able to do all the stuff that everybody of your age level should be able to do in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Until tomorrow, be healthy, wealthy, and strong. God bless you.